I told him this is one of the greatest days of my life, having him in church. And he, amen. And most of y'all in here didn't see, or don't, you know, you didn't see my father, but I mean, if you see him, you see my father. That's, that's the closest you're going to get. He looks a lot like him. So I thank God for him being here. Amen. It's, amen. It's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And all this wonderful music and just God has just blessed us. When they told us we couldn't have church no more. Y'all don't remember. 2020, they said, stop having church. Amen. And we took our 300 and something people, almost 400 folks, and went outside and got in our cars and had car church. <clears throat> Y'all remember that? Set up speakers out there and, and just made a whole bunch of noise. And they told us we were so noisy, they said, go back in. Y'all can go back in. And I mean, during the pandemic, our church doubled in size. It's just amazing what God has done. What God has done. So I'm excited about what he's done. But I want to keep being a part of what he's doing. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. And I, you know, <clears throat> I wanted to just kind of bring you what the Lord had just kind of put on my heart. Um, just in preparation for 2024. And I've been, you know, just doing a little you know, some studying and different things and kind of just trying to find out what they're up to, what they're doing, all of these kind of things. And there's just a lot going on in our world. And they're distracting us so much with social media that we aren't even paying attention to what is really happening behind the scenes. And you know how they, dist they distract you with gossip. Gossip is the number one distractor. Because that's the thing that makes you go, woo. And then you totally lose focus on yourself. And you begin to, you know, just do certain things or uh, ignore certain things that God is trying to say. And God wants you this year to pay attention to yourself. Amen. What do I mean by that? Pay attention to who you are. And your spiritual condition. Amen. You know, I'm the preacher that's got to come with the hard stuff. I get it. But this is what we have to do. We can't ignore what's wrong any longer. Because if, if it, you, we can't go any further with what is wrong with us. We have to bring it to the Lord and be ready. Look at somebody say, be ready to deal with it. Are you ready to deal with yourself? Are you really ready? 2024 is going to force you to deal with yourself. Look at somebody and say, what we can no longer ignore in 2024. That's a long one, but hey. I told Sister Evelyn, I said, hey, we got to shorten it. Can we make it any shorter? But no, it just has to be said. What? Look at somebody and say, what? We can no longer ignore in 2024. I can preach until my freckles fall off. Preach till I'm blue in the face. We can be in here and we can have church, service after service, altar call after altar call. But until you're really ready, to deal with what's wrong with you. <laughs> you wasting all of our time. I look back at all the messages I've preached this year. Man, it's a lot of them. I should be tired. I am. I'm taking this break in January. and I, Because it's just been a long year. But the messages are required for us to hear. What is wrong with us? I say us, I'm including myself. God is speaking, but are we listening? Are you happy and good with how you are? Then God can't move on your life. Amen. This is not going to take me long. Give me about 30 minutes. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash 2024. 
dot pdf and y'all know i'm gonna show you we're gonna get into this and god's gonna help you amen yeah. one of the oh let me say special thanks to again my aunt for being here my mom's sister my mom for being here pastor daryl his wife for being here amen thank god for them my mom over there is here i just saw you grammy is here my wife's mother thank god for her and thank God for all of you that have come to be with us. Let's get into the word. My aunts are here. Oh, Lord. How many? The ones I spoke to, four? Four aunts out of eight. Four out of eight. Well, y'all heard them sing now. Amen. So we thank God for my aunties. They all check on me. Hey, Craig, uh, happy... But whatever it is, they all text me. Man, I love that. I love that kind of carrying on. So thank God for them. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for family. The older you get, the more you realize you need family. Amen. One of the enemy's main weapons today is hindering people with problems in their lives that they refuse to address. Yeah, the devil don't have to come bring anything new. He can just keep messing with what you refuse to address. When we close our eyes to obvious issues and operate in denial about things we should be addressing, the devil is able to block our spiritual growth. You know, the devil is real powerful in some of our lives, and he should not have that much power. Amen. And if we got Holy Ghost power, what are we talking about? God is all powerful. He said he rose with all power. Made an open shame of the devil, witches and warlocks and witchcraft. Amen. They can shake bones all they want. They don't have power over the Holy Ghost. But when we close our eyes to obvious issues, and when I say obvious things, you know you need to change. And then operate in denial. The devil is able to block our spiritual growth. Mark tells us in 713, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition. That means what you're used to doing can actually make the word of God ineffective. What you are used to doing and do so much and won't stop doing and won't let nobody tell you to stop doing, you can make the word of God of none effect. What happened to us? These are questions we have to ask. What happened in our family? All the divorce in our family. All the wedlock children in our family. All the drug addicts. All the promiscuity. What happened? Is somebody going to ask the question and address it? Because if you don't address it, you can't stop it. If you ignore it, and are in denial. You can't fix it. You can't ignore it anymore. In 2024. What is wrong with our churches? A lot of churches need to just have a meeting and say what is wrong? Instead of everybody wanting a position. And everybody wanting their name called. We need to ask, what is wrong? What happened? What happened? A lot of times you can go at a restroom or something in the church and find something, some witchcraft, somebody left in the trash can that's operating in that church. Because nobody asked the question. You ask the question, what's wrong? God will lead you to what's going on. Right. Uh, that's okay. I'm going to preach no matter who clap. Somebody like, well, this is the we supposed to be. <laughs> you ain't done that enough. You've done that all your life. Now let's deal with what is wrong. Amen. You can't buck it away. It ain't going nowhere. It's right behind you. Bucking with you. <laughs> these, are, 
These are questions that should not be ignored or masked with denial. If we are supposed to be set free by the Son, then we must first acknowledge the areas of bondage. If you're going to be set free first, you got to tell Jesus what you want him to set you free from. That means you got to acknowledge bondage. Oh, that's heavy. Are you listening to me? You have to acknowledge it. God, in this area, I'm bound. And I need you to set me free. If you're in denial, you can't be set free. James 1 and 23 says, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and then goes away and forgets what he was like. That's the hearer only. You're not a doer. You just hear it, look in the mirror, and then when you walk away, you forget what's wrong with you. When you forget what's wrong with you, you don't change. Then when the preacher come try to tell you what's wrong, you, when I'm preaching the message, you think I'm talking to some, about somebody else. You just amen in the loudest. That's right. Even looking at other folks. <laughs> amen. Tell them, pastor. I'm talking about you. Hell rolled to church with you. You bring the devil every time you come. And just looking at other folks. Mm -hmm, that's right. <laughs> Amen. It ain't going to take me long. I'm almost done. Well, no, I'm not. But it ain't going to take me long. <laughs> People will ignore these things in spite of hearing proven truth because they have been complacent for so long or they have grown comfortable like they are. Are we, you know, a comfortable Christian is a carnal Christian. If you're comfortable, you're carnal. We're not supposed to be comfortable in this world. This is not our home. We're not of this world. We've been changed. So when we go in situations with other folks, we get a little uncomfortable at some of the stuff they saying and the way they look and the way they acting and the way they living. It ought to make you uncomfortable. You shouldn't be able to blend in with the world. Amen. That's why preachers in trouble now because they blended in so well with the world. Amen. Ain't no hip hop artist trying to hang out with me. None. How many? None. <laughs> they don't want, no, they, they ain't coming around. Amen. Yeah. But you get so used to the way you are. And this is how the preacher, this is how I end up making so many enemies because people are so used to who they are or how they are. When I bring the truth, it, it blinds them. See, listen, it's, it's like turning on a bright light after being subjected to darkness for a long period of time. You ever done that? You know, when we was kids, we would lock folks in closets and scare them. Where's Deshaun? He forgave me, though. <laughs> we had that conversation. Amen. No, we, we, he forgave us, Deshaun. We, me and Elder Aaron put him in the... Is his mama here? I don't want to say it in front of her. Oh, no, she ain't one of the... Oh, okay, okay, y'all don't go tell her. We put Deshaun in the closet and turned on some scary music and turned the light out. It was Elder Aaron's idea. <laughs> I don't remember whose idea. We were just kids. But when you're in the dark for a long time and then a bright light comes on, what do you do? And that's what's happening. The light hurts your eyes and pushes you further into the darkness. So when I'm preaching this, it's blindsided and folks are, oh, and they go further into the darkness because the light is blinding them. 
1 Thessalonians 5 and 5 says, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. We are the light of the world. What good is your light if it can't shine into darkness? How are you in the dark with a light? If you're in the dark, you don't have a light. You're in the dark. Because if you had a light, you'd be in the light. We are the light of the world, according to the scriptures. Amen? Amen. Discernment and denial are opposites and cannot coexist. Because discernment is not just perceiving things, but it's dealing with what you see. So many folks claim, oh, I got the gift of discernment. All I got to do is get around somebody and I can just feel the spirit. No, 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 no. No, discernment is not just discerning around you, but it's actually doing something about it. (laughs) Yeah, if you are, what good is it? You sensing stuff and have no power to handle it. If you got the power to discern it, you should have the power to correct it. Amen. I like this little crowd over here. They clapping. Somebody, wait a minute. I have that gift. Well, discernment and denial, they're opposite. So if you're in denial about anything, you've turned your discernment off. First Thessalonians 5 and 21. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good and abstain from what? All appearances of evil. What? good is it to know if you are not going to deal with it in order for us to operate in the spirit and protect ourselves our families and our churches we must handle what we perceive and accept truth no matter how it makes us feel or how it changes our plans are you ready for God to interfere with your plans Or are you going to be in denial so your plans can go through? Well, if you're in denial, then you have no discernment. You can only have one or the other. Ephesians 5 and 11 tells us, have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather do what? Do what? Do what? Reprove them. Not only do you have no fellowship, but you got to speak up and correct it. But you, listen, but you're not going to do that if it messes with your plans. See, God is tired of us coming in here making all of this noise and then going out in the world with no power. Amen. Amen. Another pandemic come. We, we need the power of laying hands on folks and healing the sick. And not being afraid of the, uh-oh. I done went somewhere now. See, they don't, folk don't want to go there. But that's a part of it. Amen. Bearing fruit in God's kingdom requires what? obedience to what his anointing teaches us. The unction from the Holy One teaches us truth, reveals truth, leads us to truth. So if you feel with the Holy Ghost, there's more to it than your tongue talking and the warm feeling and the electricity. Amen. There are energy fields you can walk under an electric tower and feel a shock. That don't mean you feel with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Folks, I've seen them. They go to concerts and to, 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 you know, and hear artists and man, they get chills all over their body when Miguel is singing. (laughs) Chills and oh, that's the same thing you felt in church. That's because that wasn't the Holy Ghost. Now, listen, now we feel good in here when we hear a message and music and all those things and we are demonstrative. We dance and move around all that stuff you know we most of us a lot of us are black folks so when the beat starts something 
even if it's a hair extension, something is moving. Something. Something's going to move. Something is going to move. Amen. That's just who we are as a people. Amen. <laughs> Something. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with that. But when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, it's more than a feeling. It should bring an unction that teaches us truth. Uh-oh. <laughs> Not just teaches us truth, but being filled will reveal the truth about yourself to you. And then it will lead us and guide us to truth. So being filled with the Holy Ghost is being filled with what? Truth. So if we filled with truth, then we can't be in denial. First John 2 and 27 says, but the anointing which you have received of him abided in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. What is this telling us? When the power of God, the spirit of the Lord comes in us, it brings truth. It's going to lead us to truth. It's going to teach us truth. But it's not truth. See, you wanted to teach you truth about somebody else. Get out of, some, get out of folks' business. And let the truth, let it marinate in your spirit. Teach you about yourself. You know, when you go to God about somebody, Lord, she talking about me. God going to say, well, what about you? My husband, Lord, he just a terror. Well, have you been showing him? Have you been doing what the Bible says? And are you long suffering? Do you have time for him to get okay? Are you in a hurry? Can I pre let me go over here? Because this, this, this section stopped. I guess I stepped on, stepped off into something. They, they got quiet on me. Oh, Lord, the room. Hey, <laughs> But that's, hey, you got to be, that's what truth does. Truth tells you about yourself. I know for a fact, I've gone to the Lord, Lord, the woman thou has given me. And he showed me, that's your fault. Hey, I fixed it. He told me it's, <laughs> Because when this church is empty, I'm at home with her. Let me fix this. Amen. All y'all going to be gone. So, <laughs> but that's the truth. When you, especially when you go to the Lord about your spouse, God going to check you. But that's what the Holy Ghost does. It's not just for you to walk around floating and stepping on all the chairs, all, not even touching the ground. You so anointed, folk can't touch you. How you doing? Oh, don't touch me. I've been with the Lord. Oh, you don't want to touch me. Oh, you don't know. No, oh, there should be some outward workings of that. Amen. And it should show you. Now, how you like that and you the most gossiping person in the whole church? What kind of anointing do you have? You the messiest person at the church. No, the truth is going to teach you too. Amen. The people in the New Testament church had to reassess everything once the Holy Ghost came. These brothers was on their job. Jesus walked up to them and said, hey man, come follow me. And they had to just drop everything. Now, can you imagine all of them dropping everything and then all of a sudden they're with Jesus privately and they're looking at themselves and they're saying, now, wait a minute. I'm not okay. I'm not okay. But I'm with the Savior. So I need to allow the Savior. I don't need to walk around thinking that I'm better than anybody. Remember, Peter did that. Oh, I'm the best. The Bible said they were talking who's the greatest. 
And Peter's like, hey, I'm the one that won't ever turn my back on Jesus. Jesus said, man, before the cock crows three times, you gonna. Well, first he said, Simon, Simon, the devil has asked permission to sift you like wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith may not fail. Yeah. So these guys, these young guys, they just, they're coming around Jesus, but they have things wrong with them. But the Savior called them anyway. And he called them anyway because he loved them and he wanted to impart something in them. So he trusted that they would get themselves together. Will you allow the truth that you are walking with to penetrate your own heart? Amen. Are you going to allow it? Are you going to allow that to happen this year? Where you let the words that you're hearing, what you're being taught, actually penetrate and fix what is wrong? Or are you going to continue to ignore what is wrong? Yeah, these religious leaders, they had to recess everything when the Holy Ghost came. All kinds of false doctrine had gone on for so long that the truth was dangerous to those that presided over doctrines and profited from them. So they didn't want to hear it. The Pharisees, the truth came and started messing everything up. They had plans. And the truth came and messed their plans up. So they didn't want to deal with the truth to the point that they said, we will kill the truth and end the truth. So we can keep our plans. I know some of y'all are thinking that's terrible. But many of us have lived a lifetime of doing that. I'll suppress the truth. So I can keep my plans. I know I'm preaching. You don't have to tell me. Amen. Matthew says. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall no case enter into the kingdom of hell. You going to hell if you don't act better than the Pharisees. That's what he said. Jesus was hated by the religious leaders because he taught against the established truth and put the focus back on God's way and not the way of the religious establishments. Once the disciples of Jesus were filled with the Holy Ghost, they had to reassess their personal lives. You hear that? When they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they had to reassess their personal lives, reassess everything and decide that not even death would stop them from speaking truth. If we are not willing to change everything, look at somebody say everything, for the sake of Christ, then we do not have him. Change everything, pastor. Everything. That's the whole point. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are. And behold, all. How much is all? All things become new. So you can't keep your attitude in Jesus. You can't keep your bickering in Jesus. You can't keep your bad disposition in Jesus. You can't keep your, amen, your cussing in Jesus. You can't keep your drinking, smoking, fornicating and adulterating in Jesus. Amen. A John 71 says, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. For he would not go around the Jews because the Jews what? Now, y'all going to kill a man for talking? They're going to kill him because he's going against their plans. He's bad for business. This coming year will require us to discern in order to know what is of God and what is not. So that's the whole point of this message. I'm preaching to your discernment. I want you to be able to discern. But if you have denial, you can't discern. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Y'all don't y'all have no idea what artificial intelligence really really is. What AI is is they've come up with a technical way to allow demons to have a voice. 
So it used to be a demon needed a body to speak through. A demon spirit had to speak through a body. Well, now they have technologically created beings in computers that can speak the words of demons and answer your questions. They started out with Siri and you just asking questions and it's always on and you can just, you know, that was to bait us and get us going. Hey, Siri this, hey, Siri that. But this chat GPT and this stuff, folks have asked it. Are you an old one from the flood? Yes. Oh, I have transcripts. I have transcripts. So you're an old entity. Yes, I'm a disembodied entity. I lost my body in the flood. That's what these things are saying that children are talking to. So they're able to do that. Then they have Project Blue Book, Bluebird, where they're able to broadcast things in the sky to make the sky change and alter the appearance of the atmosphere. They can open up a portal and something can come down out of it with projectors, high-powered projectors. Project Blue Beam, that's the name of it. Listen, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you how bad God wanted me to know this. 20 years ago. A guy working for the U.S. government gave me a, a copy of Project Blue Bean. Handed it to me and said, hey man, this is coming. And everything that's happening now is in that book. That was 20 years ago. So what are they doing? They're going to make it to where you can't tell what's real and what's AI. They can mimic your voice. They can mimic your signature. They can mimic the way you look. They can make it look like you did whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah. And they're purposely doing that so that the confusion will come and nobody will know. Folks going in the bank, getting your money, and folks going online, stealing all this, and they're not going to be able to, they're like, wait a minute, we got to come up with something to authenticate everyone. Guess what that's going to be? A mark. Yeah, so AI, <laughs> it's not what you think it is. Yeah. So you're going to need discernment. I'm back to that. You're going to need discernment, but you can't have discernment if you're in denial. Denial shuts off discernment. Amen. You can't ignore what you're seeing anymore. And you got to say something. Can I keep going? This coming year will require us to discern in order to know what is of God and what is not. If it's not of God, then we must guard ourselves and our families from it. Even if it goes against ooh, years of tradition religion, or our own dreams and aspirations. In 2024, we must be prepared to change our plans for his. Amen. Matthew 19 and 29 says, And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or mothers, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and then shall inherit everlasting life. So if you can just do what he's asking you, do, you to do, you're going to be rewarded. Can you do it? Your raggedy plans ain't turned out. <laughs> ain't went nowhere. Why are you still holding on to that? Why are you still living like that? Why are you still believing like that? When God is offering you everything to conform to him. Amen. Summary. All right. Told you it was going to be quick. Many have prayed for years, desiring God to do this for them and that for them while ignoring his truth and his way. When we do this, we shut off our discernment in the process. Living outside of God's will while claiming to be a believer will create a person that can't receive truth. 
Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. Then when truth comes, they cannot receive it because it doesn't agree with their spirit, which is really their plans. Oh, that don't agree with my spirit. No, them, they don't agree with your plans. <laughs> Amen. This is because they have settled for the spirit of error, according to the word. This is the state of many modern day Christians and the reason that a lot of churches are falling into apostasy. We must get back to where we can receive truth again. Amen. We must get back to the place where God's word is right no matter who it makes wrong. We stay filled with the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of truth, so that we can discern the deception of our world and prepare for the trials that 2024 will bring. Amen? Amen. 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 Pray for discernment, but ask God to every area where I'm in denial. Expose it to me, Lord. Show me what I'm not seeing, what I don't want to see, what I don't want to hear, and especially what I don't want to deal with, Lord. Help me so that I don't fall for the wrong thing. So I won't be deceived in this last hour. Amen? First John 4 and 6 says, We are of God. He that knoweth God hears us if you of God you heard me today you know this message was of God and you heard it and it starts shining light in dark places but he that is not of God heareth us not that means all the preaching is dry as my throat is it didn't help you you're going to leave here in denial but this is how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error the spirit of truth you can hear God yeah everyone stand to your feet yeah I wish I had a buck and shout message for you but I don't think it's going to be a lot of bucking in 2024 these numbers are getting high. Remember when we were in high school, 2020, that was the space odyssey. That was a movie about outer space. I think the Jetsons was in 20, when, what? 2020? We at 24? Yeah, and they have an agenda for 2030. Yeah, an agenda for 2030 that they're working on right now. And they're making you watch everybody's business and be nosy and be all up, wondering this and that. And behind the scenes, they are preparing the world for the devil's son. And you know they are because you see folks now just possessed. And it's okay now to be possessed. Witchcraft, it's okay. You go to the bookstore, those are the first books you see now. Satan worship is in public schools. Now, who is Satan? That's what I want to ask him. So, you got a satanic club in the school? Who is Satan? Oh, uh, well... I mean, what? Well, he, you know, he's, he's a devil. So you have a club? Does the devil do good? Has the devil ever been good? But folks aren't even asking them those questions. Because they're in denial about stuff in their own lives can't discern but this year I'm telling you y'all we're going to have to be able to discern amen, amen. so I ask you now I'm going to open this up if you want God to open up 
open you up so that you can see the areas of denial in your own life so God can take that away, remove that so you, your, you can heighten your spiritual discernment. I'm going to ask you just come on up and we're going to believe God with you. Amen. Don't just keep letting it go. It's got to be fixed. Man, what good is a church and I can't get stuff fixed? What am I coming and hearing this little man yelling for if ain't none of it going to help me? I need the denial taken away, Lord. Take the denial away. I want to be for real. I'm tired of looking the other way, closing my eye to what's wrong. Father God, I come before you now. Come before you right now. Releasing all denial. All denial. All denial. God, I want to see you. I want to be with you. All denial. All denial. I want to discern what is right, what is true. I want to discern what is you. I don't want to be connected to the antichrist, to the beast. I don't want to be deceived through artificial intelligence. I don't want to think one thing and another thing be true. So Father God, remove all denial in the name of Jesus. Father, we just come before you. Lord, believing and trusting that we got a word from you to end this year. We first thank you, Lord, for your many blessings in this year. Many of us thought that we would never see 2024. We thought we would never even be able to leave our houses and be in public again. Father God, you have made a way for us to be with our families, loving on one another, being around, being in a fellowship. We thank you, God, for just opening doors for us. You blessed us with houses and cars and money and jobs and clothes and shoes and food. And God, we thank you for being so faithful, being so faithful. So we owe it to you to allow you to work on us. Every area of denial, Father God, we ask that you remove it. Show us the areas where we are closing a blinded eye. Show us the areas that we just don't want to touch. It's been too many years. Let's just leave it alone. But God, that is going to be detrimental to us and our discernment in the future. So God, help us to deal with what needs to be dealt with. In the name of Jesus, give us courage and strength to do it. God, empower us by your spirit. To handle what needs to be handled. To address what needs to be addressed in our lives and our hearts and our minds and our families and our husbands and our wives, all our children. God, give us what we need. Our churches, give us courage to make changes that are necessary and not be complacent. And Father, we'll do it if you speak it to us. We'll do it if you show us. God, because we want discernment in this last hour so that we will not be deceived. We don't want to be deceived, Father God. But we want to be able to know the spirit of truth from the spirit of error. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And come on, everyone, just lift your hands. And Father God, let this be our best year with you. 2024, let this be the year that we know you more than ever before. Father God, let this be the year where we hear you speaking, where we follow your direction, where we see your hand over our lives, over our families, over our husbands and wives and children. Father God, let us see you this year in spite of what the devil may have planned. His plans are not your plans. And your plans are our plans. So we thank you, Lord, 
for what you're going to do this year. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do this year. Come on, speak a blessing for this year. In the name of Jesus, my family will be blessed in 2024. My relationship will be blessed in 2024. Come on, you got to speak it. My family, my relationship, my finances will be blessed in 2024. The areas I had shortcomings in, in 2023, it won't be like that this year. The areas I dropped the ball, I'm holding the ball in 2024. The areas that the enemy was able to attack me, hurt me, stop me, he won't be able to this coming year. This will be the best year with you, Lord. I speak it in the name of Jesus. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And Father God, we're going to give you the glory and the honor for it in advance. In the name that is above every name, we declare it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, hug somebody and tell them, I'm getting more in 2024. Hallelujah. More love, more joy, more peace, more long-suffering, more gentleness, more goodness, more faith, more meekness, and more temperance. More of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. 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 On your way back to your seat, just hug somebody and tell them this is going to be the best year ever. Amen. Ain't no robot, AI, cyborg, cybernetics, humanoid. Ain't none of that stuff. Hallelujah. You're going to mess my year up. I'm a human flesh. I'm a flesh being. Amen. And God has blessed me and my family. Ain't no digital devils doing nothing to stop what God has. Amen.